When you talk about forensic sciences as they are displayed in making a murder, two examples come to mind. One is that my, most people don't realize it, but microscopic hair examination was part of the evidence used to wrongfully convict Stephen Avery of the 1985 sexual assault and attempted murder that he was convicted of, later proved to be innocent by DNA. The other example, the test for EDTA, the blood preservative that would have been found in the blood sample found in Teresa Halbach's car if the evidence had been planted, that I can't tell you whether that test was good, whether it was bad, whether the results were accurate or not, but I can tell you the process of getting there was very problematic because it was the FBI was told in advance, we want you to find that there's no EDTA in the car so that we can exclude the planting theory. That's biasing information. They don't need to know all that. Then the FBI essentially creates a brand new test. Um, without validation, without peer review, without other scrutiny is my understanding. Um, so basically they're designing a test to give them a result that they've told, been told that they're supposed to get. Um, whether that means the result was wrong, maybe not. But it is at least, the process is troubling. Um, and it's the kind of thing we need to be vigilant to, to protect against.